I'm Flavia De Simone, as Julian uh, just said, and I'm going to moderate this session for you. Uh, it's about digital twins. Uh, actually, I'm the um, director of strategy and innovation at Enide, which is a consultancy focused on digitalization of transport. And uh, the um, well, the panel that I'm going to introduce is uh, the panelists are actually my colleagues in. Uh, two projects, which are GAMS and Astrium. And uh, as you can see, we have, uh, well, three panelists today. So we have uh, Silver Lamy and uh, Matthias uh, Ruter and Gottfried Almer. I will introduce them one by one. So uh, Matthias, please come to the stage. Thank you. Matthias is the Estrium project coordinator. He is the head of the Institute Digital of uh, Joannium Research, which is Austria's second largest research and technology organization. He holds a PhD degree in uh, computer vision. And then let me introduce Gottfried. Thank you. Gottfried has more than 13 years of experience as a service and project manager for Aspinag, Austrian operator of highways. He's uh, also currently involved in the digitalization program of the Austrian Ministry for Climate Action and Energy. And then we should also have uh, Silver, which uh, uh, needs a minute for the microphone, and uh, he will join us soon. Uh, so I will tell you a bit more about him just in the meanwhile. Uh, I will tell you a bit more about Digital Twins while I give him some time. Okay, now he's here. So, Silver, thank you for coming. Um, he's the GAMS project coordinator, and he has been managing international projects focused on uh, geomatic and mapping for GeoSat for the last three years. And he has more than ten, 10 years of experience in image processing and in engineering. So lights are not on me today, but on them. So I will now let them speak about digital twins, uh, specifically about on digital twins applied to infrastructure planning, including data collection, data integration, and data users. So um, Matthias, do you mind giving us a little of um, uh, overview on uh, Astrium? Please, can you show the second slide, not the following, but the next one? Thank you. The next one? Yes, this one. Thanks. OK, thank you. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to um, speak uh, on this stage about um, digital twins of road infrastructure. So Esrium is an EU-funded project. And together with the GAMS, it forms like a multi-million dollar investment of collecting data from road infrastructure and, much more important, bridging the gap to the end users. So making this data, making this information available to those users who can make use of it, um, for example, to um, use roads more efficient, to create, um, to do maintenance of roads more efficiently, and also to do driving on our roads safer and greener. Um, I'll talk a little about Esrium itself. So Esrium is a project which um, has the goal to do road condition monitoring. This is a classical surveyor um, application, right? So you use a, um, like a mobile mapper camera, or as we have done it, a very lightweight camera system coupled with INS, uh, <coughs> inertial measurement units and um, GNSS um, geolocalization. And we use those systems to gather raw data in the forefront. Then we transfer this, the image, the georeferenced image information to a central data platform where it is further processed. The processing is basically an AI-based processing which then translate image, translates image data um, to like detections of road damages. Those detections can be like cracks, potholes, ruts, um, uh, large-scale geometric deformations of roads and so on. And this information is then georeferenced and collected over time into a um, central database. 
Um, but this is not the end of processing. Within this database, of course, we also are, we are collecting then time series of one and the same road damage over time. And this time series information then allows us to do a prediction. So based on what we know about road damages from the past, we can um, predict how an individual road damage will develop in the future and when actual road maintenance will be done in a most ideal fashion. Um, and this information then we're distributing. So it's not held in the database, but our main goal is also to distribute this information. And one channel of distribution is, of course, making the information available to road operators. Like um, today, we have Gottfried Alma here as a representative of one road operator, but also to the driver on the road. And here, Austria, especially ASFINAG, is on the forefront of deploying um, infrastructure to vehicle connectivity via ITS G5. So we have those broadcast channels where infrastructure can talk to modern cars. And we use this broadcast channel to give drivers immediate feedback on how the road is shape, uh, shaped before them, before they are driving on top of it. And how can you make use of that? You can then direct those drivers. You can, on the one hand, recommend like a lane change. If you have heavy trucks, you can like recommend uh, do a lane change here and do not drive over all on the same road damage all over again and make it worse and worse and worse. Or if you have exactly geolocalized vehicles, like with um, equipped with. Um, um, high accuracy Galileo receivers with um, authenticated positioning information, then you can also um, recommend in-lane position changes. So um, drive just a few centimeters to the left or to the right, and then you can avoid individual road damages, and with this, um, use the road more efficiently and postpone maintenance operations. So this, in, in a short glance, is the purpose of Esrium. That's great. Thank you very much. Um, well, uh, Silver, do you mind giving us a quick presentation on uh, GAMS project? Uh, please, can you show the previous slide on GAMS? Just before this, yes. The, no, before the previous one. Uh, this one, thanks. Thank you. Yes, thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to talk here also. Uh, so, GAMS project. Is a, is a European project with a consortium of uh, seven companies and one university. Uh, the goal of the project is to, to uh, develop a prototype of, um, of a mobile mapping uh, uh, system. And uh, our motto is uh, robot mapping for mapping because we, we want to develop uh, maps for robots, I mean for uh, autonomous vehicles. Uh, but we want to do it with an autonomous vehicle. So that's why it's robot mapping for robots. And to do that, we have a uh, different technology in our consortium, uh, including uh, autonomous vehicle, of course, but uh, the different sensors uh, that needs to be embedded on the vehicle to, to collect uh, all, the, all the geodata. And uh, by that, I include uh, mobile mapping systems, and uh, all the different uh, cameras, uh, sensors, uh, and also the GNSS, of course. We, we include um, uh, a new uh, GNSS receiver uh, that includes uh, the Galileo technology. Uh, the, they have new features uh, uh, recently, a uh, new service uh, opening at uh, Galileo uh, 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 GNSS. And we include these features. It includes uh, a better positioning uh, and precision system, and also uh, a technology, uh, anti-spoofing technology to, to avoid uh, uh, hacking. Uh, also, uh, we have different technology, including uh, the fusion of all these different sensors. Uh, it's, it's innovative uh, as we, we include the, the, the statistical algorithm, of course, to to, fu to fuse all these uh, all these sensors and all this information, but also we include new information, like um, like positioning inside um, camera images, uh, and also um, odometer uh, information, 
uh, to fuse all the information to have a better positioning uh, system. Okay. Um, this is uh, the GAMS project, and That's uh, great. Thanks. we are looking now for a, a replacement for our uh, autonomous vehicle uh, uh, company because uh, they they just uh, went uh, bankruptcy uh, recently. Uh, so to finish our project, we are uh, searching recently to to replace uh, this uh, partner uh, so we can finish uh, the project because. The autonomous vehicle is one important uh, uh, part of uh, our project. Of course, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Gofrid, quickly, can you give us a like, two, three minutes introduction about uh, your point of view as Aspinag uh, on Astrium? Thank you. Uh, please, can you show the following slides? So not this one, the, ne the next one, this, yes. and the next one. Thanks. Yeah. Thank, thank you. I'm from Austria's main operator um, main role operator Asfinac and digital twins is a topic which has come upon us. It's becoming very prominent. Actually, it's found us instead of us finding it. And the project Estrium is a key project to lead us along the way there. We've been using, in, in our minds, digital twins uh, for a long time now, only we call them differently. Uh, for instance, GIS applications where you can see the, the map of Austria here, where we have all sorts of data categories which uh, can be displayed, which you can see on the left side. And this is accessible to all Asfinac people. And all sorts of uh, information is digitized and is presented. So uh, next slide, please. If we zoom in here in, into one of these apps, could, could we have the next slide, please? Thank you. Then you can see, for instance, uh, one section of the highway where there is, in this case, the inclination, the steepness of the highway is displayed. So you can see orange is, is on the bottom, that's 3%, and then it gets red because it's already 4%. And if we click another box on, on the left side, next slide, please. Then on the same highway stretch, you get displayed all the metal signs. So now, the next slide, please. We, we're, we're proceeding from this type of static information and uh, to the next steps with Azrium. So the first of challenge we have here is that we have to make this whole thing real time. So like in the example before, if you have uh, variable message signs, variable metal signs, that you could get the information within seconds in this uh, digitized format. The other uh, challenge we have is that to fill data into a data system like that, you have to connect nationwide technologies and, and processes uh, for the whole thing to work. So what we're, this is what we're doing with Atrium. As shown in this project, Asfinac could relay EGNS SRTK information, which is this corre uh, correction of positioning so that you can get well under one meter of position accuracy, and feed this data into a, 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 an infrastructure system which could provide this to the vehicles and um, in, in this way build applications to, uh, to further planning we have to get better, to a better planning even and uh, maybe to, to output safety related messages because of some road damages ahead for vehicles. And to illustrate this, and uh, next slide please, I want to show you how digital twins fit in here. So this is what we did in Atrium. We have this uh, system right on the top. Uh, it's a nationwide system which uh, gives you the, the correct uh, correction data for any point in Austria. And this was fed into our Asfinac CITS, into this, again, nationwide system which uh, provides traffic data uh, to vehicles passing by. and. And with this in, into a prototype digital twin, we, uh, we output a few messages to see if the whole thing works. But you can see that nationwide systems are here connected on a bilateral basis, where we actually want to get to, in the last slide, please. If we could have the last slide, please. Thank you. We would actually like to replace the system with an order system where you have all inputs going into their uh, appropriate layers, 
and all of the, the uh, uh, applications which use this data, they take it from uh, specialized interfaces, standardized interfaces, and can use it for applications. So this is our mindset, where we want to go to, and uh, what we're using Airstream for. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, Matthias. Uh, so, I mean, we know that Astrium requires many components to work together in an integrated system. And what we are curious to know is what are the main bottlenecks to this system that you found and uh, how you solved it or tried to solve the issues. Yeah, thanks for the question. So, within Astrium, um, we already tackled a wide range of different disciplines because we needed to start with, of course, we, with roadside image capture and georeferencing. Okay, this is a surveying, surveyor's application. Then with data transfer to, to a central data platform of the image data. Then with um, machine learning techniques to, um, to process and create road damage data. Then with distribution techniques um, with, um, uh, to road operators. Then with connectivity, um, infrastructure to vehicle connectivity, and then of course also with autonomous driving functions, because there needs to be some vehicle who reacts on incoming road damage data and um, drives accordingly. So this um, baseline was already very wide. Um, Esriom as a project will close by end of this year, and um, of course you come so far within a project. Um, the next stage will be um, a rollout phase of the whole system with multiple um, scanning units and also multiple uh, like end customers. And as the main obstacles I see here, of course, um, now we have seen on the one hand, it's of course um, the agglomeration of all this data within a central database and keeping the database consistent over time. Um, especially when you have then multiple um, sources of data in the end. So we are not just restricted to our own camera system, which can do this. We can use basically every um, scanning system which creates stereoscopic image data of road surfaces. Um, and based on this information, we see um, like establishing compatibility, of course, adapting the machine learning techniques, but also data transfer is still as one big obstacle because um, we need to bring this information from roadside vehicles in very short time into our central data platform. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's interesting to see how to deal with the many different stakeholders and how to integrate data as best as you can. Uh, Silver? Um, I mean, what have been the biggest challenges for you in GAMS that you had to deal with and uh, how you dealt with them and what do you feel was the, the main thing to solve and how you solved that? Thanks. Yes, we have uh, many challenges uh, in GAMS project. Uh, I would name two challenges uh, right now. We, we, we have, of course, the, the fact that we want to use and to exploit uh, Genesis Galileo uh, new, new features and uh, with, uh, with improved uh, accuracy and, uh, and anti-spoofing strategy. It's really important for us. It's a key for our project. Uh, and it's a new service that is difficult to exploit. Uh, we are uh, um, uh, the first to the first mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to exploit this service, so it's uh, it's, it's complicated, but uh, we are succeeding uh, on it. Uh, and also, uh, the goal of the project GAMS is to build a, a HD map, um, of course, mm -hmm. for um, for uh, public infrastructures or for private uh, uh, car companies uh, developing uh, autonomous vehicles. And, and uh, the, the, the task of uh, building the map is uh, really complicated. We, we have to use uh, artificial intelligence to extract uh, information and to classify information like, uh, like uh, road marking, uh, any kind of road marking, uh, or, uh, or everything, every object that we can identify on the road. Uh, this is a, a task that we do uh, using artificial intelligence. And after that, we have to, 
to, to ge generate a map that can be used by, uh, by, um, by um, uh, users. So we have to identify which standard uh, as a HD map is really uh, interesting for, uh, for our users and, and convert uh, uh, to the standard uh, this, this kind of information. I see. This okay. is uh, also the, a big challenge for us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's very interesting <laughs> to see your point of view on the, the challenges for GAMS. Gofrid, I have a question for you about uh, uh, your, opinion, your opinion as a road operator about the uh, actual importance and the benefits of the HD maps for road operators. So, so how do you think they can actually bring a benefit to, to you as uh, ASPINAG? Yeah, thank you. Well, mapping, of course, is something important for road operators. And what we've been seeing all these years is that one project follows the next, and parts of it are taken along. Other parts uh, somehow get lost um, after it's been implemented. Mm -hmm. So with this HD map in a digital twin approach, we are hoping to get the data of these specified projects into a central space where it is not lost, where other people can build things, can connect data, uh, which we can use for planning or for warning um, uh, vehicles on the road. OK, thank you. Um, Matthias, uh, what have been the main challenges and benefits for Astrium? Um, with challenges, you mean during the rollout? Yes. Um, yeah, so um, uh, now we have mainly, so within the SRAM project, we have partners from um, five nations of Europe. And from those nations, of course, we could get good support in um, how they do road operations. Mm -hmm. um, and even there, we learned okay, this is not harmonized over Europe. So every country and even um, every country, every contractor in an individual country has different rules on how to maintain his roads and That's how true. to um, like um, do maintenance and do operations and how to interact with the drivers they're driving yeah. on. Um, and um, following that road, we had, we had many discussions then with additional road operators, and um, we have seen that if we are to envision like a Europe-wide rollout of such a system, like to integrate also mm -hmm. surveying information yeah. from, um, which is gathered in different manners from all over Europe, but then also to provide the correct information for each road operator, we need, um, at least a minimum standard of harmonization of those individual, say, road damage catalogs and way of operation. Um, and of course, then on top of it, we need um, individualization. We, we don't want to change road maintenance because of our digital solution, but the, the digital solution has to adapt to individual needs. So mm -hmm. therefore, also the machine learning techniques and the output, the desired output, the standardized road damage information needs to be individualized. And this is one, um, still one big challenge then ahead um, on the way to a broader rollout. Yeah, I agree. There is still a lot to do in terms of regulations and uh, how to deal with this data common to many different countries with different regulations over Europe. So it's a problem, definitely. Um, uh, Silver, I was curious to know, you know, I mean, data collection, of course, can be challenging sometimes because of uh, different locations. For example, when you have to collect data uh, inside tunnels or when there are roadworks, and uh, GPS or sensors may not always work. So I wanted to know how did you manage to actually collect data also in these uh, difficult situations, in these difficult locations? Yes. Uh, yes, it's, it's part of the project to, to be able to, to map to, to operate our mobile mapping and to build uh, our map on uh, every location possible with uh, uh, 
a sufficient accuracy for, for our users. Okay. And by that, uh, I mean uh, uh, less than five centimeters uh, uh, precision. Uh, so for dead reckoning uh, areas like channels uh, where GNSS uh, information is not available, we, we count on, uh, on our innovative um, uh, multi-sensor uh, fusion uh, algorithms that, uh, that will uh, embed uh, uh, any, any kind of, uh, of new data like uh, odometer information, uh, also the vehicle um, uh, activation uh, uh, and also uh, images, camera images uh, embedded uh, on the on the on the vehicle, so we can have uh, uh, a lot more information to fuse and and to to analyze. So we can have uh, our good positioning in between two uh, two signals of uh, good GNSS uh, that uh, is uh, received. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you very much. We have three minutes left, so a last question for you, Gofrid. Uh, it's um, actually about the integration of data on a US road operator. So basically, how will you integrate these HD maps uh, into your application portfolio as a road operator? Well, I can make that short. That is what I tried to show in the slides, that we already have a data system mm -hmm. with many layers, many faceted layers, and we're just going to integrate that into this system and then step by step then we'll try to get this real time and that that's how it uh, will proceed so it's a natural process so you don't right. see it as a complexity of the process the complexity lies in the data sources to get nationwide systems uh, to connect in, in real time to your own digital twin Fine. okay so maybe we have a, a one minute or two, one mi two minutes for a question from the public. If uh, there is any questions, you can feel free to ask. No questions? Okay, fine. Okay, um, so uh, I may have another question for um, New Gofford actually about uh, the benefits that you think that the users of uh, road damage data can bring to Asfinag uh, for the long term? Well, um, of course, you have to see as a maintainer that you're constantly maintaining your roads. And, and this, um, there's a lot of money inside of this business. And if you can shorten uh, the periods uh, you need to, to repair a road work, it's simply money you win. Um, we, we are also trying, of course, to, to warn uh, in, in the safety issue, which is one of the highest issues we have, to warn vehicles if there really is uh, some damage which we haven't been able to, uh, to uh, ward off yet uh, from, from traffic. So, of course, we always have the safety issue, but you really have to think about the, the millions of euros that go into the maintenance of, of roads and you have to try and optimize that all the time. So it's, it's obvious that a system like that uh, will simply bring us to another level. Okay. Thank you. Well, I'm glad I heard positive feedback about this project and uh, how to improve through digital twins the maintenance of roads and uh, to, I mean, I'm looking forward to see the, the progress of this. Thank you all.